Welcome to Mastering GIA Refractometers with Norman Monteau. You need to watch this video if you struggle with identifying gemstones, because mastering the GIA refractometer is about to get a whole lot easier. A GIA refractometer is a special instrument. It's honestly one of the most important tools for a gemologist. Several of the refractometers that will be shown in this video are experimental designs. This is the AIG Labs Experimental Design 39, built by the AIG Labs in Westlake Village, California. According to Norman Monteau, our field gemologist and the technical director for this video, who is based in Los Angeles, says the device helps us identify gemstones, and it does this by measuring the critical angle at which light bends when passing from a prism into a gemstone. This measurement is called the Refractive Index, or RI, for short. Every gemstone has a unique RI, kind of like a fingerprint. Finding this number is a key step in knowing what kind of stone you have. It tells you if you're looking at a sapphire, a spinel, or something else entirely. It's a reliable and scientific way to begin your identification process. The importance of the refractometer really cannot be overstated. Without it, Identifying many colored stones would be very difficult. Many gems look similar to one another. For example, a red spin L can look just like a ruby, and a blue sapphire might be confused with a blue iolite. The refractometer gives us a number that separates these lookalikes. This number helps us avoid costly mistakes, and it gives us the confidence to know what we are examining. Using this tool is a fundamental skill for anyone serious about gems from jewelers to collectors and students. The refractometer is the AIG Experimental Design, 56. It provides a solid piece of evidence in your gemological detective work. To get an accurate RI reading, you must follow the correct steps. The process isn't complicated, but it does require care and attention to detail. You need to prepare your stone, use a special liquid, and look through the eyepiece correctly. Each step builds on the last one to give you a clear and precise measurement. If you rush or skip a step, your reading might be wrong, and a wrong reading can lead you to identify the gem incorrectly. Therefore, learning the proper technique from the very beginning is crucial for success in gem identification. We'll walk through these steps carefully. The goal is to see a shadow line inside the refractometer's viewing scale. The exact point where this shadow line falls gives you the refractive index reading. Think of it like reading a thermometer. The line tells you the temperature. Here, the line tells you the gem's RI. This single piece of information is powerful. It allows you to narrow down the possibilities of what the gemstone could be. By comparing your reading to a chart of known gemstone properties, you can start to solve the mystery of your stone's identity. This is why mastering the refractometer is a rewarding and essential skill. Before you begin, you need to gather all your materials. Having everything ready makes the process smooth and easy. First, you will need the GIA refractometer itself. Make sure its glass surface, called the hemicylinder, is clean and free of scratches. Next, you need refractive index or RI fluid. This is a special dense liquid that helps the light travel from the refractometer into the gemstone. You will also need the colored gemstone you want to identify. It must have at least one flat polished surface, which is called a facet. Without a flat surface, you just can't get a reading. You'll also need a proper light source. The best light source is a monochromatic light, which is a light of a single color. The GIA Polariscope is made for just this task. It can be seen in several photographs in this video. A darkened room is the best environment for these tests. A sodium light source is the standard and gives the most accurate results. However, a simple bright white light from a pen light or a desk lamp can also work for basic readings, though it may be less precise. You should also have a lint-free cloth for cleaning the stone and the refractometer. Finally, you need reference materials. This could be a gemology book like B.W. Anderson's Gem Testing, or a chart that lists the refractive indices of different gemstones. 
A reliable book like Gem Identification Made Easy is also a good choice. And don't forget that the GIA refractometer has a basic scale printed on both sides of the device, from Opal at 1.45 all the way up to Zircon at 181. Taking photos at each stage can be really helpful, especially when you're learning. For this step, arrange all your tools neatly on a clean surface. Use your phone or a camera to take a clear photo from above. This is called a flat lay shot. Make sure the lighting is good so that each item is visible. This photo can serve as a personal reminder of what you need, or you can use it to show others your setup. It helps to document your process and ensures you haven't forgotten anything important before you start the actual testing. This preparation is a key part of doing the job well. Remember to handle the RI fluid with care. It's an essential part of your kit, but it needs to be treated with respect. Always keep the cap on the bottle when you're not using it. This prevents it from spilling or evaporating. The fluid can be harmful if swallowed or if it gets on your skin for a long time, so safety is important. We'll discuss more safety tips later. Having all your tools, including your reference charts and camera, ready to go, will make you feel like a real gem detective, prepared for the challenge of identification. First, you must prepare your gemstone. Make sure the facet you plan to test is perfectly clean. Use your lint-free cloth to wipe away any fingerprints, dust or oils. Any dirt on the stone can interfere with the reading and give you an incorrect result. To take a good photo of this step, hold the gem with a pair of tweezers against a plain background. Use your camera to take a close-up shot showing the clean, polished facet. This shows that you've prepared the stone correctly. A clean stone is the first step to an accurate RI reading, so don't skip this part. Next, place a very small drop of RI fluid onto the center of the refractometer's glass hemi-cylinder. You only need a tiny amount, about the size of a pinhead. Too much fluid can make a mess and can even damage the instrument over time. Using the bottle's built-in applicator rod is the easiest way to do this. For your photo, position your camera to get a clear view of the small, yellowish drop of liquid on the shiny glass surface. This visual helps you remember how little fluid is actually needed for a successful test. Be careful not to touch the glass with the applicator. Now, gently place your gemstone onto the drop of fluid. The clean flat facet should be face down, in direct contact with the fluid and the glass. Use your fingers or tweezers to press down lightly. This ensures there are no air bubbles trapped between the stone and the glass. Air bubbles will disrupt the light path and make it impossible to get a reading. To photograph this, take a side view shot showing the gemstone sitting on the glass hemicylinder. You should be able to see the thin layer of RI fluid connecting the two. This confirms the stone is positioned correctly. Finally, it is time to take the reading. Position your light source at the back of the refractometer to illuminate the scale inside. Look through the eyepiece you will see a scale with numbers. You will also see a dividing line between a lighter area and a darker area, which is the shadow edge. The number where this shadow edge falls is your refractive index reading. For the clearest photo, you may need an adapter for your phone to connect to its eyepiece. This allows you to capture a sharp image of the scale and the shadow line, documenting your result perfectly. Once you have your reading, you need to interpret it. Look at the number on the scale where the shadow line rests. For example, the line might fall at 1.76. Now you'll use your reference materials. Open your gemology book or look at your RI chart. Find the number 1.76 in the listings. You'll see that gemstones like sapphire have an RI around 1.76 to 1.77. This tells you that your stone could be a sapphire. If you see two different shadow edges, this means the stone is doubly refractive, which is another clue. Write down your reading carefully. Accuracy is everything in this step. After you have recorded your result, it's time to clean up. This is a very important safety step. Lift the gemstone off the refractometer. 
use your lint-free cloth to carefully wipe all the RI fluid off the stone. Then, use a different part of the cloth to clean the glass hemicylinder. Make sure both are completely dry and free of any fluid residue. RI fluid can be corrosive and can damage the refractometer's internal parts if left there. To document this, take a photo of you wiping the instrument with the cloth, showing your commitment to keeping your tools in good condition. Always remember the safety tips for handling RI fluid. It is toxic. Never let it touch your skin for long and wash your hands with soap and water immediately after you are finished. Work in a well-ventilated area to avoid breathing in any fumes. Keep the bottle tightly sealed and stored upright in a safe place, away from children or pets. By following these simple rules, you can use your gem identification kit safely for many years. Safety should always be your first priority when working with any chemical substances, including RI fluid. Using a refractometer is a straightforward process that provides vital information for identifying colored gems. By carefully preparing your stone, applying the fluid, taking a reading, and consulting your reference charts, you can confidently determine a gem's refractive index. This measurement is a powerful clue that helps you distinguish one type of stone from another. The accuracy of your work in the classroom can lead to a career in the field, testing rough gemstones with just two windows, being in the city servicing a high-line jewelry store doing gem IDs and appraisals for their clients, to handling gem lab operations, or even tackling the lecture circuit. This one device can directly impact your success. Mastering this tool is a fundamental step toward becoming a skilled and knowledgeable gem enthusiast or professional gemologist. Thanks for watching our video, and if you have questions or need help, let us know. This video was produced by Norman Monteau at the Monteau Studios in Atlanta. As our journey into the world of the refractometer and its importance to gemology comes to a close, take a glimpse behind the scenes at the AIG lab at the Monteau Studios in Atlanta. Here. A dedicated team brings each production to life. Carefully screen, you'll see a dynamic representation of a bustling gem lab in a video production. This video narration was created and directed by Norman and Sandy Monto at the Monto Studios in Atlanta. Stay tuned for more insightful content from our team of gemologists in the AIG lab. And again, thanks for watching.